Hi everyone. March 24, 2019. I was sent some information by a subscriber who I want to thank for sending this along. You know, this We Build the Wall, the GoFundMe page. They raised, well, now close to $21 million. $21 million. Created December 16. 21 million in just a couple of months. Wow. Too bad we can't seem to raise money to help Americans who are really suffering. Look at what's happening in Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, as I speak, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, South Dakota. What about all those fires? Oh, and all of the flooding last year, Harvey, the hurricane, the, you know, the victims of this weather war. Yeah, but 21, close to 21 million to build this wall. Well, let's see. Trump approved of this GoFundMe page. Um, what's important for you to know is that... Apparently, he, uh, Brian Colfage, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, the 21 million donated to viral border wall GoFundMe set to be refunded. Refunded, okay. Um, but you need to be proactive in getting a refund. So. What happened is they they didn't get the one million or one billion that or he didn't Brian Colfage didn't get the one billion. So he's now started a nonprofit in Florida, and it's called We Build the Wall Inc. We Build the Wall Incorporated, and the monies that you donated to the GoFundMe, you can get a refund on it, but you've got to be proactive and do like an opt-in or an opt-out on the GoFundMe page. Here, um, a spokesman for a GoFundMe. If a donor does not want a refund, and they want their donation to go to the new organization, they must, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So that's opposite of what I said. What I said was wrong, just flip it. If a donor does not want a refund, they have to be proactive. They must proactively elect to redirect their donation to that organization. If they do not take that step, they will automatically receive a full refund. Oh, okay. Um, well, what's going on with this 20 million? What happened? Um, he started this campaign and announced on Friday, but this is dated uh, January 11, 2019. So he he formed a nonprofit in Florida to receive money from GoFundMe contributions to build the wall himself with a team of officials without the help of the federal government. We are better equipped than our own government to use the donated funds to build an actual wall on the southern border. All right, um, our highly experienced team is highly confident that we can complete significant segments of the wall in less time for far less money than the federal government while meeting or exceeding all required regulatory engineering and environmental specifications. Okay, well, uh, last, the last bit that I learned um, 
is that they're contacting private owners of property on the southern border. Whether or not those private owners will allow a fence to be built on that border, well, that remains to be seen. Uh, eminent domain can't be used by this group, so the private owners must give permission for this fence that they're going to be building. So the federal government cannot accept unless Congress approves. The federal government cannot accept the 20 million or 21 million. So he now wants this money to go into his nonprofit, Brian Colfetch. And he has created a team. Here, we build the wall. The following individuals serve on the advisory board and construction finance and or audit committees, operations, administration, PR, media, and ongoing fundraising. So he's still fundraising. Brian Colfage. Um, all right. Well, Stephen Bannon. <laughs> Steve Bannon is the advisory board chairman. You know, the former Goldman Sachs banker. Steve Bannon. All right. John Daniel Morin. Morin, Jr., an American businessman, entrepreneur, industrialist, best known for his role as president and CEO of Morin Industries. Well, it looks like he's on board with the public-private sector business. You know, he, he was the co-chair of Team PA Foundation, a nonpartisan and nonprofit organization established in 1997 to connect private and public sector leaders to propel economic progress for Pennsylvania. Sounds a little United Nations Agenda 2030. Dr. Robert S. Spaulding III, Brigadier General, U.S. Air Force, retired. He's on this We Build the wall board. Oh, Dr. Spaulding is a life member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Well, I guess, uh, I guess these folks are really into protecting Americans and making sure that the United States of America is a sovereign nation. I want to laugh. Council on Foreign Relations? Oh, there's no one on, uh, certainly a life member of the Council on Foreign Relations who is for the sovereignty of individual nations. They're on board with the New World Order, but this is very concerning. Eric Prince. Eric Prince is on the board. Okay. Which makes me question Brian Colfage. Eric Prince. I will be posting another video about Eric Prince. I may do it right after this. Blackwater, USA, now known as Academy, uh, well, well, then he went and formed another organization, uh, Frontier Services Group. He's a mercenary, and he is one sick, twisted, psychopathic dude, ma'am, brother of U.S. Secretary of Education, Betsy Davos. 
This is what the board comprises? Mm. Well, you can read about the other folks on this board. This is the board that's going to be building the wall independent of the federal government because you can't fork over 21 million unless Congress approves. You can't fork it over to Homeland Security or any federal agency without congressional approval. Okay, um, guys, I, I don't, look, <laughs> why doesn't Eric Prince just take his, his army, his mercenary army down to the southern border if he's so into protecting Americans and uh, you know, making sure that drugs are not coming into the country. And Eric Prince, you could do it. Why don't you fork over the 20 million or close to 21 million to Eric Prince and have him put up you know, all of those mercenaries on the southern border? Eric Prince can protect our border. I really do feel that Americans are just being so screwed with this whole deal here. Build. We build the wall. Now, I was trying to get some information about this guy, Brian Colfash Jr. And I don't know, you know, this is from the um, Alabama political reporter. Wall bill passes Senate, but money can't be used to build President Trump's wall. Brian Colfash must have known that prior to putting up this GoFundMe page. But in Alabama, Senate Bill 22 allows Alabama citizens to check off a portion of their income tax refund as a contribution to We Build the Wall, Inc. Millions of dollars funneled into this nonprofit. And any board that has Eric Prince or anybody who's a life member of the Council on Foreign Relations, you wouldn't see me donating to it. The organization began as a GoFundMe page, which said its mission was to raise a billion dollars to build the wall. After failing, failing to reach its goal, We Build the Wall transitioned from GoFundMe to a nonprofit. The problem with the bill is it doesn't actually fund the wall as advertised. Um, so they can't contribute to federal efforts to build the wall. But Trump has approved it. So Trump is putting his thumbs up. He's approved of this mission. Take American dollars. Take, take from the American people who have, you know, so little. Take their money and... I give a thumbs up. How many times did he say Mexico was going to pay for the wall? I think last count was a hundred. Take Americans money, right, and get that job done, Brian. But you can't give us the money, so you're going to have to do it privately with Eric Prince. You know, oh my God. All right, um, something is very, something's very wrong here. But the group announced it would be returning GoFundMe contributions by April 11, unless donors want to contribute to this new nonprofit. Uh, now, this refund announcement from Brian Colfage came a day after BuzzFeed News reported that Colfage, 
Colfage, um, pocketed money in a previous GoFundMe campaign intended to help other wounded soldiers. It's unfortunate that we can't believe BuzzFeed news. We can't believe anything. So we've got to really dig into and do our own investigation. Um, I did uh, read an article and I felt like it was just a hit piece against, um, you know, the what they consider the far right extremists, which included Brian Colfage. And uh, I just felt like it was a hit piece. So I don't know if any of this is true, uh, but apparently Colfage has had a number of GoFundMes um, and he collected quite a lot for a GoFundMe to get vets back on track. Colfage said his group was working in conjunction with military hospitals such as Walter Reed, Brook Army Medical Center, and a regional medical center in Germany. However, representatives at all three medical centers told BuzzFeed News they have no record of any peer mentoring programs or Colfage working with patients at their centers. But BuzzFeed, yeah. Known to be a, <laughs> a liar, so. Um, the founder of We Build the Wall points out the donations the group receives are not actually going to build Trump's wall, but to Colfage's new newly formed nonprofit. Uh, he recently launched another fundraising venture offering commemor commemorative coins. And I see people on YouTube, these YouTubers, yeah, they start with, buy this coin, the Trump commemorative coin. Wow. Devotees of We Build the Wall can now buy a Brian Colfage collector's coin for 49 99 with Colfage's face on one side and the nonprofit's logo on the other. Why would anybody want to buy a coin with Brian Colfage's face? For what? Tell me. He so far has gotten close to 21 million. Nothing has happened with that wall. He starts a nonprofit. He wants that money to go into the nonprofit. Now he's selling coins. And hey, the first 1,003 coin bundles sold will also include a Brian Colfash signed copy of the MAGA All Stars picture. Jesus. A coin with Trump's image can also be purchased. $49.99. There is even a gold signature series. The site promotes a package sale that offers a silver Colfage coin, a silver Trump coin, and a gold Colfage coin for only $149.95, which it promises is a bargain since the coins are valued at $200. So, yeah, uh, now apparently he's going to be negotiating with landowners along the border. Jesus. Well, um, well, this is nice. Senate votes to end Common Core in Alabama. Good news. Uh, bring it to the House, and hopefully the House will also vote to end Common Core and then get your governor to sign it and get Common Core out the head. Get it out of your schools, Alabama. <clears throat> so, uh, it doesn't seem like much is happening, you know, with this uh, wall thing. So, um, I want you to hear Eric Prince. Eric Prince on the wall. Hang on. But let me play a little bit more for you, just in case someone doesn't know about Eric Prince, or to remind all of you who Eric Prince is. 
military consulting company. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eric Prince. I am upset. We couldn't... No, 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 we've got to get that beginning going. The beginning, here we go. This from Iraq, who's covered conflicts across the Middle East. Shoot. And Colonel Tim Collins, a former it's commander jumping. of the British well, Army forget and founder it. of New Century, a private military consulting company. Please welcome Eric Prince. Eric Prince is currently the Deputy Chairman and Executive Director of Frontier Services Group, a Hong Kong-based security and logistics firm. Nice. Eric Prince, thank you for joining me on Head to Head. Thanks for having me. Um, you're back in the news with a new plan to privatize, basically, the US-led war in Afghanistan. But you were the founder and CEO of Blackwater, perhaps the world's most notorious private security firm which during the Iraq war became a byword for violence, corruption, lawlessness, and yet you've never apologized for any of it. Uh, I think that's an unfair characterization. The company did exactly what the U.S. government asked us to do, which was to protect diplomats, reconstruction officials visiting uh, UN or, uh, or other congressional delegations. We did more than 100,000 missions. No one under our care was ever killed or injured. And, uh, and people try to characterize the company as, uh, as overly aggressive. Less than one half of 1% of all those missions resulted in the discharge of a firearm. In an era when you had lots of violence in the capital, I mean, Baghdad really was the center of gravity of the insurgency. And so we had, um, you know, 41 of our men were lost in action doing that mission. So you mentioned there that the US government asked you to do a job and you did it. You mentioned that you lost men on your watch. What you didn't mention is that you also killed a lot of people. Um, you say, well, you know, percentages is great. Let's talk about individual cases. In 2005, Blackwater guards fired 70 rounds into an Iraqi civilian's car, forcing the State Department to investigate. In 2006, according to leaked Pentagon documents, Blackwater guards fired indiscriminately at Iraqi civilians, killing, among others, an ambulance driver. In 2007, Blackwater guards shot and killed 14 Iraqi civilians in what's been called the Nisor Square Massacre, or Baghdad's Bloody Sunday. That is the record that a lot of people around the world remember when they hear the name Blackwater. Sure, and when you do 100,000 missions, it's easy to take some things out of context. But remember, uh, you had many thousands of insurgents actively trying to kill Americans, and not just American servicemen, but the most uh, newsworthy Americans there, diplomats. And when the State Department asked you but to But the people I'm them, mentioning weren't insurgents. You killed at Nissau Square, your men killed a mother and son on their way to an appointment, a doctor and sadly, son, they killed a nine-year-old sad, boy shot sadly, in the head. Sadly, the insurgents don't wear uniforms. They would drive ambulances filled with explosives. They would drive... So, you, so your men thought they were shooting at insurgents? Uh, a car bomb doesn't give you much time to decide. There was no car bomb at Nissau Square in 2007. Actually, right before a Nissau Square event, there was. There Not was at Nissau Square, Square, there was no car bomb. Excuse me? Less than five minutes before that event happened, there was a large car bomb that went off where there was a protective team of ours protecting a USAID official. And, uh, and sadly, that, uh, that car bomb went off. The team decided to move through there. And uh, a support team went to block the traffic circle so that... Uh, uh, the fleeing team can move through smoothly and not be ambushed. When the, when the intelligence provided by the State Department, the U.S. government says, be on the lookout for a white Kia, yeah. okay, and all the other cars in the traffic circle stop, except for a white Kia, sadly, sometimes the guys have a split second to make that decision. Of and Blackwater say the white Kia stop, of, as you well know, because you've discussed this far more than I have, all of the eyewitnesses there say that there was no white Kia heading towards you. The U.S. colonel who turned up on the day said that there was no enemy activity involved, he said it was a criminal event and an excessive shooting. A U.S. court of law in December prosecuted one of your men for first-degree murder, for killing Ahmed Rubai and his mother at Nissau Square. Is, is that, yes. And three other, hold on, let me finish. Three other men were prosecuted for manslaughter. Four of your men, murder and manslaughter, in not Iraqi courts, U.S. courts. That's right, and they prosecuted them four times and they finally got a conviction. The first time he was thrown out for prosecutorial misconduct, Guilty. Second, they found him guilty. No, no. The first time it was thrown out for prosecutorial misconduct. The second time it was overturned. The third time it was uh, a mistrial. 
the federal government finally got them in a DC sir, in a DC jury on the fourth time. The DC tried. jury, not a legitimate jury. Um, I would say a jury of your peers does not really compare to the rest of America. No, that's a. Oh. That's a okay. Okay, so some juries are legitimate, some not, like so-called judges. I've heard that language before. But they were prosecuted for murder and manslaughter. Do you have any regrets for the people who died? A nine-year-old boy shot in the head? Wasn't an insurgent? Of course we did. Of course. We, we hired, as a company, we hired the prosecutor that prosecuted Saddam to go find each of these families to pay salation to make amends as best as possible. Did you ever reach out to them? Did I personally? Yeah. Uh, I haven't found, no, I haven't found all of them, but uh, we certainly apologize to the ones that I've had contact with. And it's not just these killings, and, and the, the, these killings that are documented. Um, it goes beyond just guards, as you know. Blackwood have got billions of dollars in U.S. government contracts. Not billions. More than a billion dollars in U.S. government contracts during that yeah, period. Or 12 years. And yet a scathing U.S. State Department investigation found that Blackwater, quote, was overbilling the State Department and manipulating personnel records. Its guards were partying, drinking, and even crashed an armored car and saw themselves as, quote, above the law. Pretty damn it. The U.S. State Department is saying this about the company they're giving contracts to. Uh, overbilling and manipulating. We never paid any fines for anything like that. And that's a fact. You paid fines for a lot of things. The only thing we paid a fine for was uh, an ITAR violation. I'll give you an example. Oh, the, oh, sorry, did you say the only thing you paid a fine for? You paid a $7.5 million fine in 2012 to settle 17 criminal charges. You paid a $42 well, million dollar settlement to the State Department in 2010 for illegal arms sales. Uh, 2012, I've already sold the business. I sold it in 2010. But the cases go back beyond 2010. The criminal charges raised all sorts of things that went back years, including South Sudan. You broke U.S. sanctions to try and sell weapons to South Sudan. No, there's no weapons in South Sudan. Uh, there was a proposal on the no. table. You never put a proposal on the table to sell the Kiev's government. Well, no, actually, million actually the, the, the issue there was a, a satellite phone. So you did put a proposal on the table to solve the case government? No, no, US with, with the State Department complained about then. That was back in 2005. Okay. Was a, my point you know, is an actual, a very dangerous satellite sorry. phone, the same thing you can buy in Heathrow Duty Free. Okay. We can argue about the fines. Let's just deal with this report. The U.S. State Department said you were manipulating personal records, overbilling the State Department, and your guards were partying, drinking, and even crashed an armored car. That was a State Department investigation in 2007. Look, we employed thousands of people. And uh, I would never say that uh, the men were perfect. We didn't employ angels. We employed veterans who volunteered to serve their country again in a very dangerous place. And like I said, 41 of them paid the ultimate cost, and hundreds more were seriously wounded. It's a problem made. when you say we didn't employ angels, we employed veterans, but right now you want to do it all again. That's the problem, is it not? Um, well, here's the thing. After, after 17 years of war, Okay, where the United States is spending more than the entire UK budget, defense budget, just this year, and still losing in Afghanistan, yeah. I think it's time to look at a different way. So I want to talk about Afghanistan, but just before we get to your Afghan plan, I just want to get to what drives you when you kind of come up with these plans to do private security, especially in these Muslim-majority countries, because you yourself have referred to the people your memoir fighting in Iraq as barbarians who crawled out of the sewer. You say in your memoir, these were the chanting barbarians American troops had been sent to liberate? Sure. If you, if, if people that think it's okay to drive a car bomb into the middle of a square, in the middle of a marketplace, well, to attempt to kill an American and in, 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 in doing so they kill dozens and dozens of civilians, absolutely that's barbaric. I do want to remind everybody that we invaded that country. We invaded that country. And he even states that we invaded at one point in the interview. This is a fascinating uh, 49 or 50 minutes uh, uh, interview and then questions. Boy, it was hard hitting, but I want to bring you up to, um, let's go to 3629. And that's where he is asked. I'm going to do another video on Eric Prince because you know what? Uh, his relationship with Trump, uh, he wanting to privatize the war in Afghanistan. Uh, it's all for uh, money for Eric Prince, but it's also, um, yeah, Trump just wanting to steal the minerals in Afghanistan. But listen to this. In any relation to Iran? No. Just to check, before we go to the audience, I've got to ask one question, last question. You are part of a group of high-profile Trump supporters, including Steve Bannon, Sheriff 
David Clark and others, who are planning on raising private money to build a wall along the US-Mexico border. You even have a GoFundMe page. Uh, what I don't get, though, is I'm pretty sure I heard Donald Trump say that Mexico would be paying for the wall. Uh, don't discount Mexico actually paying for the wall. I think most of us have, but yes. More, more news on that. Look, there's a lot of places where it's federal land and, and, a, and a GoFundMe uh, individual effort is not uh, possible, but there's a lot of places where U.S. ranchers or U.S. landowners own land right up to the border. They're sick of their, their farms effectively being massive transit spots for drug and, uh, and criminal activity, and so they would welcome uh, that. The guy who started that is a triple amputee, a military veteran. Okay, I am really, uh, and you may think that I am uh, being rather cold, um, not compassionate. When people go and enlist in our military and then get shipped off to really do the rich man's work to just give them more profits, more money, because this was not about protecting Americans. We've got to fight them over there so we don't have to fight them over here. It was, God, if Americans, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand how anybody cannot see that these wars are about invading countries, taking them over, stealing their resources, oil, minerals, whatever, Americans. It's, it's an abject disgrace at this point for Americans to deny the reality. So, our soldiers, no, I'm sorry, I don't thank you for your service because your service is not about protecting me. Your service is about ensuring that the military industrial complex, the CEOs, banks, those uh, defense contractors, that they make more and more and more money. That's what you're doing, soldiers. So no, I don't thank you for your service. But, you go off to war, you make the choice to enlist in the military, so you are assuming a tremendous amount of danger coming your way. I don't like when veterans use their injuries to get sympathy. Like this guy just said about Brian Colfesh. Oh, he's a triple amputee. Well, guess what? You put yourself in that environment where, well, it was pretty well known. War, you could die. You could become an amputee. You can end up with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. But you made that choice. So I am tired of that being used to pull at the heartstrings. Who, who started it and he's raised more than $20 million and, and the cost per, per the cost of the people for money. When, when, when Trump told us more than a hundred times, people have counted, that the Mexico would pay for the wall. So why do we need you and this guy and his co page? Uh, because Trump lied to all. Because, I, I, again, don't, don't discount Mexico actually paying for part of the wall. Uh, uh, there are things that, uh, that may happen that Mexico will end up paying. He so, Eric Prince apparently knows that there are things happening and they may very well pay for the wall and they still took Americans' donations close to $21 million. What is that about? The last, last chapter is not written on that, mark my words. So Mexico, Mexico will pay for the wall, so then why are you fundraising? Uh, uh, you can have it both ways. There's a the wall, they're not going to raise money. Because people are frustrated, they're sick of not Oh, 
that's why you're fundraising? Because people are frustrated? What? So you're taking donations because people are frustrated. Nothing has happened, by the way. Nothing has happened regarding building that fence. I'm frustrated that the president can't get Mexico to pay for the wall. Two years into his presidency, after claiming they're frustrated and it is a national security issue when you have thousands of people crossing the border with a lot of drugs. Look, America has a huge opium epidemic. And you know the majority of the drugs come through legal. Opium epidemic. Ah, soldiers are soldiers. That's right. Guarding the opium fields in Afghanistan. And do you think Eric Prince, well, come on, might he be also running drugs, trafficking drugs? I don't have evidence of that, but I would think, well, his ties to the military industrial complex, um, perhaps the CIA, we all know that the CIA is the number one drug trafficking organization in the world. You don't think Eric Prince knows that? And he's talking about, oh, those drugs coming across the border. This is all a fucking sham scam. And I'm tired of it. I am so tired of lying, psychopathic, evil people. <laughs> Your points of entry, I'm talking about the funding. Trump said Mexico would fund the wall. Did he lie to people when he said that? What used to be a bipartisan issue, the Democrats have made a hyper-partisan Did he lie to us when he said Mexico would pay for the wall, given you're now trying to get Americans to pay for I don't believe the president has lied, and like I said, the last chapter on Mexico paying for the wall is not done yet. Okay. Mark my word. But, you're sitting on the board, Brian Colfage, who put up that GoFundMe, who got close to $21 million, and you're still claiming that Mexico is going to be paying for the wall. Perhaps the GoFundMe might have been a little bit premature. Something's going on here, all right? And it's unfortunate that we are at a point where no one can be trusted because of people like Eric Prince who lie just and Trump who lies and politicians who lie ordinary Americans lie wouldn't you like to live in a country where you could trust people <laughs> all links are below